I had a message request from the girl. And she said, thank you for keeping it cool. That's how we do it in the sound. What's going on, guys? And welcome to Rabbits Use Cars. You know, it's my tummy rumbling. I must be hungry for lunch. But anyway, I want to share a story with you guys. You got to understand that 98% of these stories involve me. So I've got to be extremely careful how I tell some of them. And you got to keep some of the details vague to protect the guilty and things of that nature. Um, I think enough time has passed, and these all happened at the old store, and it's been a little bit, so I think we're safe on this one. And if not, eh, fuck it, whatever, they'll get over it. But, so we've been doing a lot of changes here. You know, I think in the last video, you guys heard me talking about just, just so much on my plate right now. And it's insane at times, it's a little overwhelming. So, I actually hired a new salesperson, you know, kind of on a temporary basis to see how it works out because I've never done this before. It's always been me on the sales, and I was sitting here and, and talking to him and, and you know, and asking questions and like, what to expect? And I said, this is the craziest sales you will ever do in your life. Um, you're going to meet some of the most interesting people. And, you know, I shared a few stories. Uh, like the mall guy, you know, you know, the guy that wanted me to sell the car and he owned all the property the mall came from, the guy that worked for the water plant. Or, I mean, just crazy stuff. I mean, crazy customers. You know, we got a lot of different types. Every walk of life comes through this building. From, I mean, literally this morning, we had a guy who was a freaking Vietnam War hero come in here was looking at cars with his son to, you know, the mechanic down the street to, you know, a football player down here at Clemson. We we get so many walks of life in this building. You know, celebrities, and like I was talking to him about this, and I was like, you know, we've had Jeff Dunham call us up interested in vehicles. We've had, uh, from the TV show, Big Mother Truckers. You know, Chris from that show. We've had so many people interested, I mean, in what we do here. So there's a lot of names. And of course, we had a lot of YouTubers too that hit us up for different cars. Um, so that's kind of a neat thing. But the sales side of this, like when you work retail sales, is a little slower paced. It's more like a chess game compared to checkers. But you get some really more interesting clientele, and that's where the story's headed. Um, so let's back up a few years. This is at the old store. Uh, I was showing a guy a C10 truck. He calls me up. He goes, hey, I'm local. I want to come look at this truck. And I'm like, hey, bud, you know, told him about it and this and that. I said, well, just let me know what time, you know, we'll pencil you in and I'll be there. Well, sure enough, he shows up. Guy gets out, nice Mercedes Benz. Walks, you know, walks through the front door, walks out of the gas station, and looks at this truck. And he has a very attractive female with him. And, you know, you got to think about it. I mean, I've had a lot of customers bring their wife or significant other with them. But she was attractive, a little too attractive for him, in my opinion. But who am I to judge? So I didn't think anything about it. He walked around the truck and, you know, can I hear it run? Yeah, man, we'll fire right up. And just all the little back and forth. And, oh, come on, what's the best price you can do? Well, we ended up selling them a truck that day. All right. So fast forward, about six months later, I have a guy call me about another car. And, you know, started out, you know, in messages. And like I said, just went to a phone call. And he's like, I'd love to come look at it. He said, I'm pretty local. And, uh, I can only come through the week. No big deal. You know, we're here through the week. That works. So he shows up about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, walks in with a very attractive female that I've seen before. And I'm like, what's the odds 
of seeing the same girl twice with two different guys looking at cars here. But I played it cool, didn't say a thing. We made eye contact a couple of times. I think the point was like, hey, I've seen you before, but yeah, whatever. So he looked at the car and he ended up not buying that car. Well, they were there for about an hour and he left. Didn't think anything about it. Well, fast forward another four, five, six, seven months, whatever. Guy calls, wants to look at a car I've got. It's actually a Chevelle. He goes, I want to look at this Chevelle. And I say, hey, bud, just let me know when you want to come down. I'll make sure I'm there and you know, we'll show you anything you want to see. And uh, so he told me a time. I said, I'll be there. Comes pulling up, same MO, nice car, walks in with this drop dead gorgeous brunette that now I've seen for the third time with three different guys. And keep in mind, the scenario is the same. All these guys are like mm, mid to late 50s. If I had to guess, she's mid to late 20s, tops. Um, I guess the best way to describe her, she's a JCPenney gal. Very attractive, you know, good looking, good looking chick, you know, and, but, you know, there again, third time I've seen her in my business with a third different guy. This point, less than barely over a year, maybe a year and a half, tops, three times. Well, you know, it is what it is. Well, this guy ends up buying the car. So we're sitting there doing the paperwork. She's sitting right there in the office with him. And, and you can tell there again, we're making eye contact again. Like I've seen you again. And she just kind of smirked a little bit. And you know, they were all huggy huggy and all this stuff. And this man pays me literally in hundred dollar bills for this car. She drives his car. He drives his new Chevelle away. Awesome. You know, it's great. Kind of odd, kind of odd, you know, but you know, whatever. So, fast forward probably two months later. This is really close. Um, so this had to be, so you gotta think about it. Between the second and the third time was like spring to fall. And this is closer to winter. I had a friend pass away. And a well-known guy. And... You know, so I'm there you know, at, the, at, the, at the receiving friends, the viewing or whatever you want to call it. And we're there. And, you know, it's kind of a quiet, kind of a somber time. And, you know, quite a few people showed up. It was in the evening. And, you know, I'm kind of in line, you know, to kind of pay my respects and do what I need to do, you know, do your thing. And I'm looking down the line. And there's this chick again with another guy. Wearing black. I mean, I mean, dress, I mean, dress nice, like a funeral, but. But I'm like, again, you know, we do our thing. And I go through the line. And you know when you go through a receiving, like the receiving friends are viewing, you know, like you'll go through the line, you know, the casket's there, and you do your thing, and I'm sorry for your loss, and you go through. And then they kind of got a little spot there where everybody can kind of gather, and you kind of talk for a minute, and everybody kind of makes their way out. Well, the guy she was with was tied up talking to somebody, and I'm like, I want to tell you something, ma'am. It's none of my business, but I see you quite a bit. I said, I've got family members that live close by that I haven't seen as many times as I have seen you in the last two years. She said, yeah, I'm a pretty popular girl. I said, I can see that. And uh, her date, I'm assuming, was walking up. And keep in mind, this is the same MO, middle-aged guy, her looking hot as usual. Um, you know, he walked up and you know, I, I didn't know who this guy was, but, you know, I kind of introduced myself and kind of made my exit. You know, it was a little awkward there for a second. So I got home and I checked my Instagram, you know, just like everybody does. You know, you're scrolling through and I had a message request. And it was from the girl. And she said, thank you for keeping it cool and not making a scene. And I said, hey, I'm not here to knock anybody's hustle. And I just left it like that. She said, yeah, it's not really a hustle. She said, you know, I don't want you to think bad of me. And I said, I'm not here to judge. I mean, this message is going back and forth. But something else caught my eye when I looked at that. It was her last name. 
And I'm, it was kind of an odd last name. And the reason this last name, I mean, it's, it's an odd name. It's not a real common last name. But I've had dealings with this last name. It's actually a good friend of mine that I went to school with. And I haven't seen him in a number of years. And I just thought just how ironic. I've never heard anyone else with this last name before in my life. So, you know, the first thing that popped in my head, holy shit. My buddy from high school's daughter is a call girl. And then the second thing is, holy shit, I'm old. And the third thing is, we might have us a potential customer. Hey, you know what? If you like it, I love it. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars.